Rachel and I'm here to do my top five books of the last five years tag. Uh, I don't know I'm, if I'm calling it a tag. Uh, I'm taking this idea uh, from a book all of a recent video where she um, cataloged uh, all of her uh, top books of the past uh, five years and uh, then picked out her favorites. But I think her uh, list was a lot longer than mine. She had many more favorite books per year and then a longer overall list as well. But uh, I only have 19 books total. I picked these 19 books uh, throughout the years 2015 to 2019. And I talked about them on my favorite reads uh, videos of uh, the last five years, so I'll link to that playlist down below. And anyway, from those 19 books I decided five seemed like a good overall number of for top faves. So I thought I'd give a quick rundown of all of the books on this uh, top list of 2015 to 2019, and then go more into detail for the top five. So anyway, for 2015 I chose four books, technically, <laughs> as top books. The first is The Dove Keepers by Alice Hoffman. This is historical fiction of a sort, really uh, more uh, biblical fantasy fiction about uh, the time of uh, the siege at Masada, and we're particularly following uh, this siege through the perspective of uh, four Jewish women. Then we have The Interestings by Meg Wallitzer, which is about a, a group of friends uh, who go to uh, artistic camp together in the 60s and sort of uh, form a lifelong friendship of trying to remain artistic and interesting throughout life, and then we go into the future to see how life actually pans out for these people. And Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel, a post-apocalyptic novel which imagines if a uh, flu wiped out most of uh, the Earth's population and uh, what might become of uh, some of the survivors trying to survive and, and uh, thrive artistically even in an altered world. And finally, my cheat is The Neapolitan Saga by Elena Ferrante, which is actually four books. It's sort of a massive book, I would think of it overall, chronicling the lifelong friendship between uh, two uh, Neapolitan girls, uh, Elena and Lila. Uh, their fierce love and their fierce competition to uh, remain academically brilliant uh, throughout the tumultuous 20th century. In 2016, I chose four top books for real this time, starting with A Tale of Love and Darkness by Amos Oz, which is somewhat memoir, somewhat autobiography of uh, Amos Oz um, chronicling the lives of his uh, parents primarily, um, particularly around the time of the founding of the State of Israel. Uh, then I have The Empire of the Senses by Alexa Landau, which is about a uh, German-Jewish family uh, during World War I, and uh, the uh, foreboding uh, sense of tension that's starting to grow around that time. Then we have the last one by Alexandra Oliva, which is also post-apocalyptic in that there is uh, a virus that wipes out most of humanity, but we're seeing it from the perspective of uh, people on a wilderness reality TV show who are not quite sure of what's real and what's not real in this circumstance. And finally, A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which is the first book in her Wayfarer series um, depicting a far future when uh, Earth's uh, final humans have uh, reached alien civilization in another galaxy and uh, are earnest attempts to live and thrive in a new civilization. In 2017, I dropped to two top books of the year. Uh, Planet Fall by Emma Newman, which again is the beginning of a uh, science fiction series. Also taking place in the far future when uh, Earth's inhabitants have colonized a planet 
uh, by way of uh, one of uh, Earth's citizens eating a foreign uh, seed and uh, gaining a vision by God that uh, directs them to, from the dying Earth to this new planet. And then To the End of the Land by David Grossman, is, which is an Israeli book uh, taking place around uh, the 2006 war when uh, to forestall what a woman believes might be um, a death notice for her son from the army, decides to take um, a hike with uh, the boy's father and uh, it goes into a reckoning with the family's past. In 2018, I chose three top books of the year, starting with All I Love and Know by Judith Frank, which is a uh, cross-continental book about an Israeli-American family. Um, a husband and wife are uh, the victims of a terrorist attack in Jerusalem that takes their life. And uh, their two small children, controversially, are given over to uh, the husband's uh, twin brother and his uh, same-sex partner. Uh, who live in America and, you know, generally have a very different outlook on uh, life and uh, politics and what have you and uh, dealing with how these uh, two characters deal with uh, becoming parents. Then I have Shelter by Jung Young, which uh, starts with a home invasion and we follow uh, the victims as uh, adult son who uh, then has to take care of his uh, traumatized father and mother after this event and it goes into a lot of family drama and also a delving into the meaning of the word home. And finally He, She, and It by Marge Piercy which is a 90s cyberpunk novel uh, depicting uh, Earth in a uh, another sort of post-apocalyptic sort of setting when uh, climate change is uh, a lot more advanced and uh, what's left of humanity is living in a uh, sort of dystopian world of uh, GovCorps and uh, outlying uh, free cities. And one of the free cities is uh, developing a cyborg, which is of uh, interest to the, uh, to the GovCorps. And finally, in 2019, I have three top books to talk about. The first is The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish. This is a historical fiction novel taking place in 17th century England when um, the country allowed uh, Jews back into the country uh, to live. And uh, we're specifically following a female Jewish scribe, quite the, the rarity. Um, and then we also... Uh, jump way into the future into modern day when uh, her papers are being discovered by a historian and her team. Then I have The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon, which is a uh, sprawling gender-swapped George, St. George and the Dragon story um, with primarily female characters uh, in an epic fantasy world uh, where dragons are real and asleep Good, uh, good dragons are in the east and evil dragons are in the west and uh, the evil dragons are about to be woken up and uh, the world has to come together uh, and get over their uh, socio-political differences uh, to, you know, to survive. And finally, Anti-Semitism Here and Now by Deborah Lipstadt is a non-fiction book with an epistolary uh, conceit where historian Deborah Lipstadt uh, engages with two fictional composites of uh, one as a fellow professor and one as a, as a student uh, talking about how anti-Semitism manifests in the modern day in the West. Okay, and before I go to my official top five favorites, I'll just give a quick recap with, uh, with just the covers of the books this time.
Okay, and weirdly, I suppose, I think I'm going to start with uh, my very favorite book of uh, the top five, uh, because uh, I'm not changing things around much from uh, the top tens video that I did several months ago. It was uh, Jason and Old Blues Chapters and Verses Tag, where I chose my top favorite reads of all time, and uh, I don't know, maybe uh, I'm even looking through them and kind of questioning it, but for now I think I'm just going to stick with uh, the books that I read in the uh, last five years that also made my top ten list. So my number one favorite book of the last five years is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the post-apocalyptic novel which has sort of become my cornerstone for uh, wanting to find uh, books of that genre that will live up to it. For the most part I haven't been able to find them. I have also uh, last year read uh, Emily St. John Mandel's Backlist, which uh, didn't really move me as much. Uh, this uh, particular book, I think, uh, was successful in part because of its subject matter, which was unique. Uh, Mandel is coming out with her uh, most recent new book this year, which I think might be a little bit of a uh, return to her subject matters of before, but hopefully uh, she'll maintain some of the flair she had from Station Eleven. Then my second favorite book is uh, Planet Fall by Emma Newman. Even though it's the beginning of a series, I always uh, I see it somewhat separately from the rest. It, it can be a standalone on its own, uh, and uh, I'm taken with various uh, aspects of this book. Uh, it features an unreliable narrator, which I think uh, gives it quite the emotional arc uh, when push comes to shove and we grow to know and understand this character. There's also uh, such subject matters as faith and secrets and uh, community and uh, both hope and vengeance and also mental illness uh, recognition. My third favorite book is The Interestings by Meg Wolitzer. This uh, was the first Wallitzer book that I read. I think it's still my favorite. I've since read all of uh, her books written for adults, and uh, I'm just very taken with her style and her subject matter. She writes a lot from the point of view of uh, 20th and 21st century women, and she's open and honest about uh, sexuality and uh, desire, ambition, and relationships. And uh, in part, even though The Interestings is my favorite overall of all of her books, I'm just uh, grateful that it was a portal into uh, Meg Wallitzer becoming one of my favorite authors. My fourth top book is uh, my cheat book, and it feels appropriate because it is four books. It's The Neapolitan Saga by Elena Ferrante, which I still very much believe is uh, one epic book about uh, Leela and Lenu. Um, this is a book that uh, is particularly of interest to me because of the strong characters and how they leap off of the page and all of their ambition and stubbornness. And uh, I have to admit that uh, the uh, TV series adaptation uh, is helping keep this alive for me as well. We recently uh, got the trailer for the second uh, season of uh, which I believe has started to air already in Italy and is going to start airing in the U.S. Uh, in March. There are some absolutely fantastic actors in this, particularly for the main two characters who uh, bring these uh, people to life ex pretty much exactly how I imagined them in my head. And finally, we have my number five top book of the five, which I feel like it's my most personally controversial because it's the one I read most recently. I read it uh, last year in 2019, uh, but to be fair, uh, by this point I've read it over a year ago, so I guess I've had enough time uh, for it to not be quite so fresh and new and exciting in my head and to really just uh, be able to have faith that I still love it anyway, <laughs> past all the uh, personal hype. <laughs> anyway, I'm talking about The Weight of Ink by Rachel Kadish. This is impressive on uh, several fronts. Uh, 
There are so many fascinating, well-drawn, nuanced characters in both the 21st and 17th centuries. The timelines both feel very different from one another, with uh, vocabulary choices and so forth really distinguishing the 17th century and making it feel uh, very different uh, and historical. And you can also just tell from uh, the writing all of the research and care that Kadish put into the crafting of this book. And uh, this one isn't one that you can turn to us for escapism. It'll take uh, time and effort to really understand the full gist of it and uh, the grist of it. Uh, and of course, on top of that, uh, dealing with uh, particularly with what it means to be a female scholar, both in the 17th century and even today, and to be a scholar in general, and uh, to try to live life on what terms you can in both times. And of course it's also uh, a wonderful primer on both uh, English history and Jewish history from an oft-overlooked time period. So it might be the freshest in my mind, but I think I feel confident that uh, it deserves to be in a top five spot. So that about covers it for me now. I will link to some reviews and leave information down below. I hope to be back again sometime later this week. I thought maybe I could uh, dip into its tags. Uh, I haven't been tagged in anything, but I'm going to take a leaf out of the book of just, you know, doing what I want here and uh, seeing something that looks interesting and also uh, relevant in what uh, is popular on booktube recently so hopefully i can be part of the conversation so stay tuned thanks so much for watching everyone and i'll see you